Next we have approval of 2013 resolution to the WASB policy and resolutions committee regarding the shortage of speech language pathologists. So I did embed the um, resolution and I have, I did send this to you earlier just for your review. Um, I did hear from both Mr. McMullen and Mrs. Deming that they were comfortable with me forwarding this on to WASB because the resolution wasn't needed by Friday. Mm -hmm. um, so we do need to take formal action tonight. If you choose not to pass it on, that's fine. I'll just need to call them and let them know that we would ask to withdraw it. But last month we had talked about considering uh, this resolution again, and if there were any other resolutions, I didn't hear from anyone on any other topics, but we know that there is a shortage of speech language pathologists in the state. We have a, two openings here in Toma. There are openings um, in many school districts around the state. We really need to look at a multi-tiered or multi-level um, of services that could be available. And other states have adopted a model of that nature where there are paraprofessionals in the speech language area as well as speech language teachers. And I think it's a matter of DPI and the institutions of higher education just saying we're going to do this because I'm not sure we can get the state organization to agree to it. They've been very protective. They have. And when Tony Evers, Superintendent Evers, was here, that was a question that actually Mr. Gorder asked him in terms of what did he think. And he, you know, said in front of our teachers, this is an adult problem that's not helping kids. So the adults in this state need to get this problem worked out so that we can get the services to our students. And I think we really need to put pressure on DPI and, again, the colleges to create some avenues to get people through those programs so that they're in our schools working with kids. And uh, Mrs. Buswell, you presented this mm -hmm. last year. What, what kind of feedback? The main feedback was they felt there were other disciplines that were also shorthanded and they didn't want to be dictating one over another. You know, that if they felt some of the other specialties that are short staffed also throughout the state, they didn't feel they could single out just speech language pathologists as one that needed to be addressed. There were more. Um, but, I mean, I, I, I think we're certainly not seeing a anything that's come up you know we're having such a problem with with filling this position we're not the only ones and I know they've had an issue even being able to supply the services through CESA haven't they yes so you know you would think that at that point they're going to have to take some sort of action mm -hmm. and real specific to speech language pathology so I would hope that they would consider it more highly this time so because there might be a few other mm -hmm. um, areas that need the same thing done there they don't want to do anything at right. all and, and i don't see why they <laughs> can't add sense. you know if they, if they want to address speech language pathology along with others they could certainly do that um and well, that's and, maybe and an I, angle we could they may approach. have addressed some of the issue because um again superintendent evers commented mm -hmm. on how the new teacher licensing that has become a bit more flexible. He was talking about how a someone who teaches in Illinois, for instance, maybe they have a master's degree in chemistry, they work for Dow Chemicals, they got their teaching license, they'd moved to Wisconsin, and they couldn't teach here without taking two years of college courses here in Wisconsin. And so he talked about how they've, they've created some more flexibility for those types of positions through the licensing at DPI. But this is an issue that goes beyond just DPI because it requires, again, that a special certification through the, well, maybe it doesn't go just beyond. I mean, the, I guess the institutions of higher education are involved in that special licensing as well. Um, but it's an area we, I personally think needs to be tackled and we, we shouldn't be afraid to say the adults need to fix this because kids are suffering mm -hmm. um, because we haven't fixed it. Well, and I think you'd equate it similar to um, an LPN and an RN in nursing. You know, there, there are certain duties that someone maybe doesn't have the full certification, but they can certainly do parts of what are required. And the, the profession as a whole just doesn't want to want to give up those parts. 
So, you know, it, it is a tough thing for DPI, I would imagine, because they don't have a lot of control over these specific types of people because a speech language pathologist could be someone out in a medical setting versus a school setting. So it's not like they're only in a school setting. So that mm -hmm. creates a problem too in trying to dictate something to another group that we really, you know, it's not our uh, play, in a way, our place. But yet the need is there. You'd think they would want to create and, and give people the opportunities. Here's a perfect example of creating jobs when we need jobs. Mm -hmm. so, and need someone to fulfill those positions. So. Which again then sort of <clears throat> brings me back to the question um, when you look at the actual resolution on it, DPI doesn't have the authority to tell the, doesn't have the authority to dictate the qualifications to be a certified pathologist. So we're we have a resolution for a task force to make recommendations. I mean, does that accomplish enough? For new certification programs that would establish those alternative um, models to provide services. Um, it may not be sufficient, but what will happen at WASB, they will they will tweak this. Mm -hmm. they, they did they it in previous ones. So they'll make, mm -hmm. if it is something that they decide they want to uh, propose to the full uh, delegate assembly, they would make the appropriate tweaks. It's an important issue to us. It's worth pursuing. Mm -hmm. I Physical therapy and occupational therapy have um, occupational therapy assistance right. and physical therapy assistance where the, the therapist overlooks the program and sets mm -hmm. the program for that resident or that patient or that student mm -hmm. and then they ha have an assistant who carries it out and I could see where that would work very well for speech therapy if Mm -hmm. If the, they would produce a certification or graduation or whatever for that kind of position. Certainly you would think if the state of Wisconsin would certify that sort of a, of a program and allow it to be within their schools that the school, that the universities or you know the mm -hmm. WTCs of the world would Response. accommodate that mm -hmm. by providing you know the certification and the courses required for that. Mm -hmm. right. So I think that's probably the angle that we I have see. to go sure. by. Sure. Go that makes sense. Okay. As a district we've never been ones to hold back on something that will improve our system here. So I see we go ahead with it, whatever needs to be done. Mm -hmm. um, okay, as Mrs. Zardi's Indicated it has been submitted already. We are looking for a, for approval after the fact, but if there's not support for it, as she indicated, it can be withdrawn. But I'd look for a motion to approve the uh, the resolution. So moved to approve. I will second. So we have a motion and a second to uh, approve the 2013 resolution to the WASB Policy and Resolutions Committee regarding the shortage of speech language pathologists as set forth um, in the resolution that's embedded in the, in the documents. Any other questions or discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries, and so that resolution is approved at least for submission to the assembly.